We've got a day before the draft. No one can say with certainty what will happen when, who, whatever. It's all up in the air. But let's say it is Bryce Young, okay. the first off the board. Mm. With one day to go, who will the second quarterback off the board be, Ryan Leaf? Well, I, I would I would have expected, leading all the way up to it, that it was going to be C.J. Stroud. In fact, I, I thought C.J. was the guy at the top. This, yeah, sure. this S2 test, whoever leaked it, and I suspect it was probably the Panthers, um, because I think there was probably some expectations for them to maybe go with C.J. Stroud, mm. and this is something that they can – you know, motivate and, and make it work out that way. Who knows? You know, that's just speculation. I don't know for a fact that they did anything like that. But uh, I, I ultimately think C.J. slides a little bit, which I, which I think is going to be a benefit for him. The expectations may not be as high, of course, to be the number one overall pick. I think Tennessee uh, figures they have a chance. They jump up and try to make a big trade with Arizona, pop to three and take Anthony Richardson. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the uh, Titans uh, and uh, that, that staff run the triple option next year and win the South. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So we're all laughing. The but yeah. uh, hey, <laughs> the I, 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 there is a joke <laughs> in there a little bit, but hey. Your first year, if you can do what you can do really well is run the football. Derrick Henry's not going anyway. I'm sorry. You look at that cap hit. Whoever has to take any of that money on, they're not going to do it. It's just too much right now. Either they got to cut him out right or pay the guy and then hand him the rock next year with a rookie quarterback. So that's where I would go. If I was Tennessee, I'd make the jump up there, get a guy that has a high ceiling, understand that there is. And play him right away, you would. If you're going to do it the right way, yeah. I, I, you guys have heard me all year. Don't play him. Yeah, you know, but let Ryan Tannehill play, yeah. but let him learn and high. everything like that. Um, but I, this is almost the idea that, you know, this is not what I would do, I but I think mean. this might happen. Yeah. Might happen. Right. You know, you brought up an interesting point that you said very quickly is, you know, you don't know who leaked that information out. And, and I got to say this, I want to say it out loud, is that yeah. one of the most disgusting things that happens during this draft process, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are doing doing things to benefit themselves. And sometimes people take this competition thing a little too far. And sometimes teams leak that information. But I'll tell you this, the other people that are involved in that sometimes are agents yep. because they're trying to get their prospect up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to talk about C.J. Stroud is probably being, he should be, in my opinion, the, the you know, one of the top two quarterbacks off the board because of his performance and who he is. These tests that come out sometimes, you know, they measure intelligence, they measure different things, and, and I've just always felt that don't ever get intelligence confused with the ability to make good decisions and make good decisions under duress. I think CJ can do that. I think he's been in situations and circumstances not only in terms of the in-game duress, but the pressure of being in Ohio State or at Ohio State. You know, But again, I'm kind of fixated on this other thing that goes on that isn't a very pretty part of the draft and is really disappointing where people will justify their actions and behavior to harm a kid who it's his life dream to get into something in the spirit of competition. It's just, what you know, part of the ugly underbelly of this time of year. I'm a bit surprised after I feel like, I, you know, it's not NFL driven that he's actually going to go. Mm. To the, the draft. draft. Yeah. Yeah, because mm. over, the the last, over the last week, this yeah. has been a direct campaign to just yeah. almost like sm just smear him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, that, that, for me, I'm like, I just want to be with my family. What if it does it? What if this happens and I slide all the way to 25 or something like that? You know, or, or maybe, who knows? That's a fear that I would have in that moment after feeling, you know, put upon for the last week. And I would have just embraced my family. Mm -hmm. Let's do it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's not go there and give them maybe a spectacle for this process. I have a question for the table. If you were C.J. Stroud, and we saw this with Jalen Carter, he had an interview with his agent about uh, all the commentary that has gone on with his pre-draft sure. process. Why doesn't C.J. Stroud come out and have a situation? Why can't he come out and speak for himself? Why? I, I guess he could approach it the same way. He could sit down with Anyone, that, Good Morning Football, if he wants to speak on what's happening to him right now? And say what, though? To, to, that, to that point, to me, for him coming out, I'm going to allow my film and what I've done throughout this process to speak for itself. After his combine, you had the experts. I mean, I remember seeing Daniel Jeremiah tweeting, this is one of the best throwing performances I've seen at the combine. Mm -hmm. He's done nothing to have anything negative to be said about him. So if whoever it is are putting this out, what he's going to come out and say, no, my S2 cognitive test was really this percent. Who cares? I think there are a lot of things that are being said about him 
aren't possibly factual. So to come out and say, all right, no, like, no, I really am smart. Don't listen to what this report might say or he that says report a tweet might say. Yesterday afternoon that says, did you see my cognition against Georgia? Just that leaves that tweet alone. Like, is that, does that play well for him? Joe Burrow had tiny hands. He came out and said, sorry, everybody, I'm going to retire because of my tiny hands. And everyone's like, oh, Burrow's so cool. How does that hit you? Stroud tweets something like that. See, that is what I love because I feel like that quiet confidence, if I'm a team, if I'm a franchise, that's what I want from my franchise player, from my quarterback to be leading the way. I don't need you at the press conference on Monday saying, hey, no, I'm going to do this, X, and that, and we, I'm guaranteeing the way. No, no, no. That quiet confidence. He's saying to everybody, you can talk about this test, all these other things. Turn on the film against Georgia and see what I did in that game. And I think that's the impressive part about it. I, mean, I was just looking up C.J. Stroud this morning, and i am come across the Columbus Dispatch, and they compare oh the lead-up to the draft to a middle school dance. Yes. As the lead-up is coming around, there's rumors this girl's not going to go with that boy. They don't like him anymore. All of these pointing the fingers. And at the end of the day, I think when all the dust clears, C.J. Stroud still is going to be the second quarterback to come off the board in the NFL draft. Mm. And that's going to be a franchise extremely happy to have him a part of it. It'll feel good, won't it? Yeah. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Mm. The middle school, we've had a lot of middle school dances. This one's really special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, this question is very difficult. The yeah. third quarterback off the board, we don't know. Did you see what happened yesterday? There was no. a massive 2023 media story that happened. Someone goes on Reddit, just some person, all right? Just a, a man or woman, we don't even know. And they post. It was me. It was Ryan Leaf. Here we got him. We got him. The person who may or may not be Leaf posts, Will Levis has been told by the Panthers that he's going to be the number one overall pick, and he's sharing that with his friends and family. Now, that goes nuts on Reddit, and that's fine if it was just that. The betting line, oh. massive movement, whether it's DraftKings or Caesars, wherever you go to, tons and tons of money is flying around because of this person's post saying Levis is going number one and people believe it. It sounds credible. They had to take it off the board in some because everybody's <laughs> betting on Levis to go number one. <laughs> I don't think Levis is going number one. We just heard Cam Wolf said the hay is in the barn. Is the hay Will Levis? <laughs> um, and and just, I'll just leave it like this. Two days before the draft in 2018, you are an idiot if you think the Browns are taking Baker Mayfield number one overall. There's no way. Rosen is pro ready. Darnold is USC. Josh Allen is the big swing if you want it. Lamar won. You're not taking Baker. They took Baker. I, I still don't, I, I still am not convinced it's 100% that it's mm. Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. And if they go up and they announce Stroud or Levis, I, I, Richardson, I would still be like, the draft is wild. It's always wild. If, if you would be surprised, you've not been through that many drafts. Scott, tell yeah. me I'm wrong. The draft no, is insane. It, it's, it is insane. And there, there's so many factors involved. <laughs> and part of what happens here is, you know, we watched Anthony Richardson making this move. We've seen Will Levis making this yeah. move. The other factor here, again, I go back to agents. Agents doing their jobs. And sometimes the right way they do is they cultivate relationships with people in the media. Mm -hmm. All of us at this table. Mm -hmm. People at other tables. And what they do is this is the time where favors are exchanged. Mm. And they start talking <laughs> about things and elevating people in order to help their friends who have given them information. So the, the players that are represented by certain agents, is, there's a reason certain agents become so powerful okay. and so noticeable. It's because there's people that do them favors, and that helps the client. That's the agent doing their job. It would draw, it drove us crazy, but that's the agent doing the job that they're paid for. Mm. Two questions for you. Yes. Um, would a player actually ever be told this far in advance, you are our guy number one? Yeah, not by us. No, I know. The Cowboys <laughs> right. the Cowboys had the uh, contract done with Troy Aikman in 89 before. Well, it was... today, would they do it? Probably. I don't know. Right. Like, so, if Bryce is going number one, yeah. does he know is he know? told by the management of the Panthers, like, we got you? Yeah, maybe. Secondly, mm. Maybe they've a, told him. Yeah. Yeah. Secondly, a draft off that question is, awesome. is there kind of, like, a sick pleasure in being <laughs> the Panthers and knowing that the hay is in the barn and everyone oh. else seems to literally be running around your barn setting themselves on fire because they don't know what's going on? <laughs> that's why they That's why they went, why they went and got the number one overall dra draft pick, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. I, I who was, you're asking, is there narcissism involved? Yeah. Uh, um, so far today, Scott, I've asked you about ego and narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> and spite. <laughs> and spite. <laughs> and I just want to talk about snacks. Yes, um, yeah, we all do. You know, I guess there's certain personalities that would embrace that mm -hmm. that idea mm -hmm. once they're there. Um, but yeah, it's there. There is a lot of intrigue. Now, of course, I think the league likes the fact that people hold the information yeah. close to their. Yeah. yeah, it's good for the league.